guest uh, is is Andy from Digital Naturalism Labs, who is returning once more to join us. And this time, Andy will be telling us about the Moth Box, a project that he's been working on for the last, ooh, I'd say, year-ish or so now. Yeah. Got it. You nailed it. Let's find out more about this moth box. All right, go. Well, that, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know about it. There's moth boxes. It's a box, and it takes photos of moths. Um, the uh, the reason it's called the moth box is because it used to be called something like auto moth or something like that when we were first working on it, and then I just googled that auto moth was like already a thing that people were doing, and so I messaged my friends I was working on it with. And I was like, hey, we need a different name. In the code, I'm just going to call it Mothbox because it's like the worst name I can think of right now. But it gives me something to label things. And it's stuck. And it's kind of grown on me. Um, it, it is, in fact, a box. It's very descriptive. Uh, but <laughs> I, at the time, at least, I felt there was a, a better names we could come up with. Um, so hey, everybody. Um, I'm Andy. And you saw me with some sloths earlier. I was also in my jungle clothes. Now I'm in my cool open source hardware clothes, but I'm still coming at you from Panama. Um, you can all hear me all right, I'm guessing. So that's cool. Um, I'm right now gonna give you like a little presentation to show you some mothbox photos and stuff like that for like maybe like 10, 15 minutes. I'm just gonna go fast. And then the last like five minutes or so, I'll give you a quick lab tour. I wanted to save it for the end because I'm going to like unhook the laptop and run around. And there's parts where the internet's probably going to fall apart. Um, so we'll save the, the crash and burn for the end of the thing. Uh, so if you're looking forward to the, the lab tour, uh, check it out at the end. There's a chance you might see some jungle animals like agoutis. Um, so, hey, everybody, I'm going to try to present Let's share a screen. Uh, I don't need to see these tips again. Um, boom, boom, boom. One second. Screen one. No, screen two is where it's at. Cool. Okay, here we go. I'm guessing you can see this screen. Do you see a thing that says moth box probably? Let's hope so. We do. <laughs> That's amazing. So cool. Hey, it's a moth box. Believe it or not, I told you it takes photos of moths. Um, so it's a thing. It attracts moths and other insects, and it photographs them. Um, and then we have some AI stuff, some cool open source AI stuff that we made that automatically detects all those moths and identifies them which is going really cool and it's really quite fun. And the best thing about it is you can build this thing yourself. Um, it's, a, it's a cool, fancy new way of doing uh, biodiversity monitoring and uh, you can build this whole thing entirely yourself. I'm gonna go super quick through a bunch of these things because this is just some other presentation I had. Uh, so don't worry if you see me skipping past them, just let it flow over you. So I'm Andy, my partner is Kitty. That's Valencia, the tapir, and this is Lupe and Agouti. Um, all together, we help uh, run digital naturalism labs. <laughs> um, we're a little art and technology place for interacting with nature, and we try to do this in the wild. Um, so that's what Dynalab is. Dynalab itself is a solar-powered little workshop situated in a funky little jungle town called Gamboa, which is uh, right on the Panama Canal, between the canal and the rainforest. And it's full of biologists, field biologists from all over the world. We have some prototyping facilities, laser cutters, printers, and we try to do all of our own material upcycling stuff. So we got extruders, we got your 3D printing out of plastic bottles kind of stuff, um, all kinds of fun different things. We do art science events, we teach field courses, we teach design courses, we run conferences. Um, there's, in fact, three chairs of the Digital Naturalism Conference uh, right here, right now. Um, we're just missing Paula and you got the whole, the whole bunch. We're going to be doing a Dynacon June 22nd to July 23rd, something like that. 
in Indonesia next year. You should apply to join us. It's going to be really cool. If you like nature and you want to build something with nature, that's the whole point of it. So check that out. Also help run cool um, conferences and gatherings like the Gathering for Open Science Hardware, which is a cool community for building open science hardware things. Oh, man, it'd be cool if they were having another event, too. Oh, they are also having it in Indonesia next June and July. Um, we're going to try to make a merge, uh, do them both at the same time. It's going to be great. Check it out. I'm glad you're pumped, Joel. It's going to be really cool. Um, so we did like a gosh here in Panama. It was great. But the main things we kind of do is we work with field biologists and engineers and artists, and we try to get them to interact with nature in new ways. This is a fun tree climbing robot camera that Michael Candy made. Um, and so we make tools, we do animal enrichment. I talked about this earlier with the sloth. There's a sun bear um, doing some kind of fun uh, tongue maze with honey. Uh, here's Valencia um, eating some uh, you know, a banana maze. Uh, we also make other tools for field biology, make 360 degree camera traps. This is a butterfly strength tester. Uh, this is a camera trap that floats for detecting fishing bats. Um, these are nearsighted camera traps that we made at GOSH 2022 um, to help detect butterflies. You can mod a regular camera trap for about $2 um, that you can take photos of butterflies with. It's really cool. Um, everything we do is open source. If it's not open, it's not science. Um, it's something else. So let's talk about the moth box. So this moth box um, comes from a background where uh, back in the early centuries, um, I just learned actually kind of starting with the Spanish, but then the US came in the 40s um, because World War II was going on and they were like, we need hamburgers for Americans that we're storing in your country. And so they got everyone to, to chop down all the rainforest in this area called the Azuero Peninsula. And now, uh, before it was all rainforest, and now it's just beef, and it's all destroyed. So there's not even much beef anymore. Farmers can't even raise cows there because the soil's so depleted. So it's really not great uh, for the animals that used to live there, especially the non-cow animals, because all this land is just utterly destroyed. Um, but there's really cool groups like Pro Eco Azuero and Pantera. They're doing massive reforesting things there. And so they're trying to uh, literally change the climate. They're basically like terraforming this part of Panama um, to get um, you know, nature back there. And it's, it's going pretty great. And there's a couple scientists like our buddy Hubert um, working uh, with uh, uh, amazing scientist Daisy Dent, and they want to study like how does this actually work? How is this happening? Um, uh, what are good ways to do uh, uh, reforesting? And how do you measure the effects? How do you know like oh we planted trees like this? Is this working better than planting trees like this? Um, and so they're doing things like putting camera traps and other traditional ways of doing biodiversity monitoring. You want to see what kinds of you know, things you got there, right? But they're also getting weird and experimental. And so they're making moths uh, or they're making uh, insect, insect monitors and using the moth box. Uh, that's how I got brought into this. So why study moths? Why do you want to look at insects uh, in general? This is some new, this is some fun moth facts I'm going to throw at you that I didn't even know this like a month or two ago. So if you take all the species on earth, there's about 2 million things. Since we started doing like science, um, we've started giving names to things. We're like, oh, that totally armadillo. Okay, great. Now we know that that's the name of that armadillo or whatever. Um, so since we started giving like scientific names to critters, we got about 2 million things on earth that are alive that we have names for. Um, so that includes like all the funguses, plants, literally everything that's alive we gave a name to. Half of those things are insects. Um, so a million of those are insects. Half of all the things we ever given names to. One in every five is a beetle and one in every 14 is a moth. These are some of the most specious things ever and it's amazing. And so compare this to something like mammals. There are, remember I said there was a million insects, there's 6,500 mammals um, that we have different species for. Um, so one in every 300 or something 
uh, things as a mammal, if you take all the species and pull them out of a hat. And so if you have a creature you're studying that's hyper diverse, um, you can actually give you very good uh, insights um, to, to uh, what's going on. If you know like, oh, these 40 species are here and these 108 species are here and these 35 um, are in both places. This can give you kind of a, using the insects as kind of a sensor, um, it actually gives you a better picture of what's going on. Insects can also be hyper-localized. If you think about, if you have a camera trap and you see a monkey um, go through this farmland, very naively, you could be like, well, I took a picture, camera was in a farmland, I saw a monkey, monkeys live in farms. Um, but less naively, um, you could uh, reason that, oh, this monkey probably doesn't live there. They're probably fleeing from destruction from one habitat and trying to find a new habitat. A lot of insects can do that because they're very short lived um, and they are very endemic to small areas. And some moths, have to live with just one specific plant their whole life cycle. The caterpillars only eat one specific plant. So you can actually monitor plants in a way by looking at what kinds of moths are in an area. So instead of having a, a range of like, I guess this monkey can you know, go a couple you know, kilometers, maybe even 100 kilometers, these moths can give you kind of a focus on an area down to like a couple hundred meters. It could be very different. Um, and then finally, uh, insects are easy to attract. We, we figured out how to hack their systems um, and started, uh, yeah, we put on a big bright light. Monkey doesn't respond to bright light. I'm being kind of mean to this, this poor monkey and its baby running away um, from fires. Uh, but the problem with insects, it's still really hard. They're small, there's a lot of them. We don't really know what a lot of them still are. You have to stay up all night looking at all the bugs and counting them. There's got to be a better way. So we, we uh, Hubert found this paper back in 2021 where people were like, hey, let's make a robot thing with the Raspberry Pi to see what's going on with these bugs. The problem is some people started making these and we're like, let's use one of those. But they're like $15,000. Um, uh, many of them are super closed source. There's little public information if they are open. Uh, we, there's some we couldn't find actually how to build them um, or even like what kind of camera they're using. They're open source. Um, and many of these are super low resolution, like eight to 16 megapixels, literally just like a Brio webcam uh, quality. And this can tell you if like, hey, there's moss there or not but it's not good enough resolution to tell you like what species of moth there is. Many of these things are also super large and heavy, like huge, like two pelican case size. Um, size. How am I doing on time? Let's build our own. So we started building our own um, and I tested it for the past year. Importantly, we went to the community. How much time do I got left? I'm just checking in, just shout at me. Uh, you've got about four minutes. Amazing. You know what? You're not going to get the lab tour. I got too much moss to tell you about. So uh, anyway, we've been doing this cool thing. And now we have a moth box. You can build all the parts are about 350 to 400 bucks. Um, this is literally just because like it's got a big battery. It's got a uh, Raspberry Pi in there and a high resolution camera. And you can take really cool uh, photos and you just set it up and you just leave it and they run by themselves for about four nights. Um, then we made these, uh, we basically modded a YOLO and a bio clip to detect all the moths and then um, automatically ID them. And importantly, we made a little UI so that scientists can go and you can refine things. This is a thing that a lot of like computer scientists and engineers leave out of a lot of things. They're like, I did a thing. It does it automatically. You don't need humans anymore, but that's, that's not gonna ever really happen. Um, so instead, we have a UI, uh, we use uh, Voxel 51, and you can go in and, and edit this data and then feed it back, it gets better, it's awesome. Um, lots of things, our image quality went way up, um, lots of cool stuff. Just Google Mothbox and you can find it now. If you're gonna be around Atlanta at the end of October, you should sign up for a Mothbox building workshop because I'll be there and I'll help you build a Mothbox um, for free. And um, I think last thing I want to show you is like, 
Uh, just yesterday, uh, working with Gosh member Julian Sterling, uh, helped out and modified this labeling software so you can rapidly go through moths. Um, this is like increased our productivity at labeling moths like a thousand times. It's awesome. We got cool keyboard shortcuts. And oh, there's one more thing I got to show. Where is? Oh, okay. It's got to be. We've not got too many tabs. I got too many tabs. There's pictures. Oh man. Well, anyway, you should check out our Instagram. We got lots of fun, weird pictures and stuff. And uh, you can, oh, it's in this same tab. I just made it big. Check out our Instagram. We got sloths and moths and moths, um, all kinds of fun, cool stuff. And soon we're gonna have a fundraiser too where you can get moths from like a night printed on your shirt and weird funky patterns that I made, which is gonna be really cool and fun. I ordered some uh, demo shirts I'm gonna try out, make sure they don't just look like crap. And then I'll have some of these uh, posted and anyone can order them and help raise money for conservation. And... <laughs> Oh, I am excited to get a moth shirt. Yes. <laughs> I will be getting a moth shirt. I am very, very excited for, no for all of this, but also the shirts. The moth shirt, so I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm going to get a moth shirt. It's, just it's not going to be limited to shirts either. I found out you can we can make bikinis. We can make shoes. Um, <laughs> moth shoes. Moth shoes. Yeah. I need it. I need it. <laughs> Modified the software. Absolutely, Greg. It's been mothed. We're mothing it hard. And we will it's include all those really links hard. so you can follow uh, Andy and Mothbox and Dynalab and Moth Shirts and everything. We're in we'll include all those links so everyone can follow along with all this amazing stuff. Thank you so much, Andy. Thank you. And everyone, go be a member. Come join and a member. Yeah. Member. Speaking of <laughs> members, huge shout out to Rob. Robert, 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 however you, I don't know what you prefer, but <laughs> Rob and or Robert, thank you for becoming a member. Our 25th Look, member today. 25th member of the day. <laughs> Look at how red that beautiful thermometer is getting. Amazing. Wow. We are Amazing. one quarter of the way to our goal. Um, but it seems like people are signing up a lot faster. So that's great news. We like um, that. Yeah, Andy, do you have any more sloth-based incentives for us? So we have the, the like, I'll tell sloths that you love them. Um, I, I have 10 of those. Have we used those up already? We've used, we've we've used, used those our up. 10 sloth we, We've blown through those already. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Are you know what? Good. I'll do I'll do five more. That's what. Okay. I'm increasing it. Five more. Uh, you can tell a sloth that you love it on Friday. I'll go to the animal rescue, and while I'm helping feed and clean them, um, I will let you know about your love for those sloths, and I'm sure they're going to appreciate it. <laughs> All right, everyone. If you if you love sloths and open hardware, this is really the stream for you. <laughs> Thank it you so really much, Andy. We'll talk soon. Ciao. Later, Bob. You do